Good day, everyone. I was born and raised in Detroit. Growing up there, I saw people like me running things. This is a courtroom, not a circus, so we're going to calm down. I'm sorry. What I found there was a passion that I didn't know existed. This is the bottom line. I'm excited to free fall into the limitless possibilities with we the people. So many are fearful of the law. They think it's something that works against them. I think you need to begin to accept responsibility for your mistakes. We are the people. Joseph Richter claims his ex fiance threw his engagement ring after they argued during a hiking trip, losing the ring forever. Daniel McEwen says he was overwhelmed by the heat, and it's not his fault the plaintiff can't catch. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lauren Lake presiding. You may be seated. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Sean. Thank you. Good day, everyone. Good day. This is the case of Richter versus McEwen. Mr. Richter, you are suing Mr. McEwen for $7,350, the cost of a ring you say was tossed away on a hiking trip. Yes, Your Honor. And the defendant, Mr. McEwen, says it's not your fault that the plaintiff can't catch. Correct. All right. Well, I want to hear what happened here. Mr. Richter, I'll start with you. So we were just celebrating our engagement. I, I proposed to him 11 months prior, 11 months ago. Um, I got him a Aurora engagement ring, and he just was upset. We got to our trip for Death Valley. Um, I surprised him with the trip, made sure to have all of our supplies together, um, have emergency supplies all run together. Okay. Um, we, by the time we got there... What did you plan on doing at this trip? We were planning on going up to, um, to a destination, which would be on top of the, like, on top of the mountain that we were going okay, hiking Okay, so over. hiking, hiking? Yes, 14 hiking. miles, Your Honor. Yes, 14, 14 miles. miles, but nothing that he hasn't done before. We're a very adventurous couple. That's exactly that's actually one of the reasons why... I was so attracted to him in the first place was because we met at a sale, uh, a sale race, uh, San Martin, so about three years ago. All right, so you are an adventurous couple. Yes. Did you both plan this trip, or was this trip planned by just you, and it was a su surprise? It was planned by me, but as soon as I presented it, um, surprised him with the trip, he already knew where we were going. He okay. knew the history of, the, of um, Death Valley. So... I mean, he knew what to prepare, uh, to expect. Your Honor, I didn't find out where we were going until the day of. So it wasn't like I had much time to prepare. Oh, really. so it was kind of a surprise It was a surprise, trip. yes. That's the whole point of a surprise. A surprise a trip. A surprise. So how would I so, prepare for a surprise? But you had one day. And then even then, you could have said no. You didn't say no. Maybe you said, <laughs> let's keep, let's go. And you, and you were excited about it. Were you excited, Mr. McEwen? Your Honor, I was excited about the trip. Um, as Joe was saying, we are an adventurous couple. I didn't realize until we got to Death Valley that he was really ill-prepared. Um, I would like to present some evidence. That I'd like to see it, please. Thank you. <clears throat> so you say he wasn't prepared. He was not prepared. How was he not honor. prepared? In Death Valley, it always has these really large temperature um, changes. So from the bottom to the top, it's like drastic increase or decreases. Prior. I knew about the day of. He keeps saying prior as if I knew a week or two in advance. I knew when we got okay, in the car did to you go. Know, did you know before you step foot out and start climbing up? Yes. But Joe had already Joe had already Joe had already claimed that he had prepared everything. He was like, I have the bags, I have the water. I have clothes too. I have the trekking poles, which we didn't have. We ran out of water six miles into the hike. I was having sickness. My body was swelling. I told Joe that we just couldn't continue the hike anymore. So you asked to go back down. You didn't want to continue. Halfway through I asked to go back down. And so what happened? we got into an argument and I basically told Joe I couldn't do it anymore. So I took the ring off. I nodded to Joe that I was going to toss it to him. He nodded back. That is not what happened. And I tossed the ring. That's he threw his hands definitely out. Definitely not what happened. The ring dropped on the ground. We <laughs> both searched for about five minutes. And again, I was just in a We You tossed a ring on the side of a mountain? You, you were hiking? I'm sorry. We so searched Joe for five plays, minutes? Joe I five searched minutes. for five minutes. Yes, no, yes, I did. You, I was going through no, extreme no, you, trauma and yeah, pain, Joe. You searched for five minutes. I told minutes. you that 
I want to right, let's, let's, get some order. let's get some order. I, I want to understand this. What possessed you? I don't care how hot you were. I don't care. Why would you take the ring off? Because of an argument? Mm -hmm. My my finger was literally swollen, Judge. As you can see from the evidence, it was 116 degrees when we started. Yes, that right. is too hot to be hiking, but yes. But okay, Your Honor, so I want to also add that it was extremely hot that day, and it was not the normal temperature that it should have been, because that's, that's the reason why we went out there during springtime. But spring did anybody time. check the temperature before you went up to see what it was going to be that day? You know, with weather change, it, it, it fluctuates, so you never know until you actually get there some of the times. Coming up. You nod or you didn't see the ring coming. I didn't see he, the ring. It's a ring. It's not like did, it's a baseball. He did not. You can, he did not. Okay. I'm just, oh, no, no, no. Funny no, no, no. you no, no. say baseball. You play baseball, so you should have caught the ring. But the and later. I've tried talking to the pastor, and the only thing that he said is he's just going to pray for me because I need Jesus. Oh, I'm, Come, I'm very approachable. You can talk to me anytime. We're back with a dispute between Joseph Richter and his former fiance Daniel McEwen over a lost engagement ring. What would possess you to take the ring off and toss it to Mick, Mr. Richter? The argument really was about my well-being. I just felt like he was inconsiderate of me and how I was feeling. Again. We're the only ones who are really on this mountain. So to continue to go to the top where I'm already feeling sick, if something happens to me, we're stuck there. How did the argument escalate so far that you felt like when you took this ring off to toss it to him, Mr. McEwen, you were deciding that it was over? Like you was ending the whole relationship on the side of the mountain? And the worst part well, about it... Well, it's just typical of how our relationship goes. You know, we go on all of these adventures. I'm sorry, who blocked two? It's really because... Who blocked two? Can, I, I, was trying can to talk I speak to you. or are you just going to continue to do what well, you've been you doing the whole Well, you did with me, so let me interrupt you. Mr. Richter. The, so, 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 hold on. It did... Is this the first time you all broke up? Yes. In the three years Broken that we've been together, up, we have yes. been... Yes, exactly. We have never had an issue. We've always communicated all we everything. So at the trips. point where you've gotten angry, you're hot, you're tired, y'all in the argument because you don't think he's respecting and cares about your well-being, you get so mad, you take the ring off, you say you look at him like you're going to toss it, and then you say, yes, Mr. Richter, toss it. You nod or you didn't see the ring coming? I didn't see he, the ring. It's a ring. It's not like did, it's a baseball. He did not. You can, he did not. Okay. I'm just, oh, no, no, no. Funny no, you no. say baseball. You play baseball, so you should have caught the ring. But the... <laughs> a boy, it's a ring, not a baseball. So, on, Mr. Richter, you? what I want to know is, did you nod and say to no. him? Yes, he did, Your I Honor. I did not, Your yes, Honor. He did. I didn't even know. At that point, we were arguing. It was heated. I didn't realize that he was going to take off his ring and throw it off. like an argument. Right. When you're arguing with somebody and you want to take a ring off and throw it, I mean, that's one motion. Off, throw. Your yeah. Honor, I wish that I could... I wish that I could get you to understand Your Honor, the extreme conditions this. that we Not were really in. Not only did he throw the ring, he, like you said, he spent the five minutes looking for that ring. I spent until it was dark as Your night Honor, it was before, so hot uh, before out heading there. The coyotes down there. were like skipping across the burning And then sands. they'll make it worse. He goes all the way down the mountain, waits in the car, and then we start arguing, and then he breaks off everything. And so you never found the ring? No. All right. I would like to state, Your Honor, that the ring wasn't insured as well. As I already stated, yes. Does it was anybody not have a receipt for the ring? Do you I have do. it, Mr. Richter? May I, may I, may I see my it, evidence? please? Oh, Thank you. And so let me ask you this when you came down the mountain and cooled off, did you all get back together? No. no. He actually blocked me. I reached out to him repeatedly before coming here today. That's the only reason why I'm here today, because this man decided to I take see the, the cheap for way the ring. out. $7,350. Yes, that's correct. Custom diamond setting. Mm hmm And customized as well. Your Honor, I was just done with Joe at the end of that day. Um, him not caring about my well-being. Him, again, literally, I was almost on my knees on this mountain. So this obviously has, this argument is rooted in something that happened before you ever went hiking. Oh, because absolutely. I it's just see. absolutely. It just sounds like you just don't want to communicate about anything. You which act is like why you, you don't walk. know. No, okay. what? Okay, Joe. No, no, tell me. Say it. I've already said it. You don't consider my feelings or my well being. It's give me a day and time then. Anytime we've gone, ever gone on a trip, Joe, how many times have I said to you, hey, why don't we just go somewhere? Maybe we go to a nice island. We can relax. We can do this. And it's always, oh, maybe, okay, next time. And we do whatever it is that you want to do. And I I'm stuck sorry, through it for three like... years because I do love you. But I, I, 
I can't do this anymore. What I'm hearing is, Mr. Richter, you are the real adventurous one. And because Mr. McEwen loved you, wanted to be in a relationship with you, he just wanted to experience whatever you wanted to experience and be with you, although that was not necessarily his choice. Mm. With that said, you know, Mr. McEwen, I can understand how this kind of hike would make you want to tell Mr. Richter to take a hike, right? I can see how you could be on the side of this mountain like, now see, now I done bit off more than I can chew because mm -hmm. I don't want to be here. I'm hot. I don't feel well. I'm scared, right? And then your adventurous partner is like, no, you can do it. You can do it. I get that. But this is not the time to take off a very valuable ring that you've been given and decide you're going to get so mad, you're going to throw it to him. Now, an engagement ring is a conditional gift in many ways. There are various ways that, that, that states and courts have ruled on this, but in most instances, it's viewed as a gift in condition, right, on condition that something happens, and that is the marriage. You did not handle that appropriately. It was actually extremely negligent, and you had no business taking such a valuable thing off, throwing it across the mountain. And for that reason, you haven't even haven't gotten married. It is the termination of this court. Judgment for the plaintiff for $7,350. Court is adjourned. All rise. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant owes $7,350. I'm so done with you. As you Honestly, should. like, I can't. I'm, just, no, don't, don't talk. Be done. No, be Seriously. done with me. I'm trying to go on my trip to Fiji. To Please go to the trip to Fiji. Don't come back. I, Actually, I, I don't want to. One major trip. I have trust issues now because of you, because you're goofy self. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, let's go. Coming up. Did you realize it was a church revival going on at the time? Yes, I was aware. Oh, you did know that? Yes. How did you know? Because of the signage outside? Uh, not just the signage, but the loud music itself. All right. Well, he intentionally likes to just interrupt our services because he's an atheist. Justice Central. You're watching Justice Central. Stay tuned. You're watching Justice Central. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. Willard Nicholas claims disruptions from a neighbor during his church revival caused donations to come up short. Eddie Colon says he tried to talk to the pastor but was ignored, so he had to take matters into his own hands. Good day, everyone. Good day. This is the case of Nicholas versus Colon. Mr. Nicholas, you are suing Mr. Colon for $2,500 for disrupting your church revival. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. That's correct. And the defendant says he should not have to pay. He didn't do anything wrong, right? That is true. I want to start with you, Mr. Nicholas. What happened? I am suing this man because he interrupted my revival. We was trying to raise $4,000, but we came up short due to his behavior. And, you know, we need this money for the community. We have several outreach programs that we have. What was happening? How, where, well, you're having a revival in a church or outside? Inside a church. We do it seven days for seven days straight, once in the morning and once in the evening. How close is his house to the church? His house is literally next door. He's my neighbor. But he likes to get out and you know, play loud music, loud rock music, and interfere with the church services that we have every Sunday. Did you realize it was a church revival going on at the time? Yes, I was aware. Oh, you did know that? Yes. How did you know? Because of the signage outside? Uh, not just the signage, but the loud music itself that they were playing. The loud music that they were playing? Yes. At the revival? Yes. All right. Well, he intentionally likes to just interrupt our services because he's an atheist. How long have you been living next to this church, Mr. Colon? I'd say for about maybe two months now. I relocated for a job. I've tried talking to the pastor, and the only thing that he said is he's just going to pray for me because I need Jesus. Oh, I'm, Come, I'm very approachable. You can talk to me anytime. Coming up. He got at some of my congregation members and was like, you know, I'm feeling sick. I can't sleep. I can't do that. I can't do that. We're back with the case of Willard Nicholas, who brought Eddie Colon to court over a disrupted church revival. So you're trying to raise money. Trying to raise and money. On the, and how many evenings is this that the music goes up? How many times have you been trying to do the revival and the music is loud? Well, my congregation, I handed them flyers to hand out to the people in the community so we can get offerings and donations for the revival. But he circulated a petition to stop all that from happening. 
he got at some of my congregation members and was like, you know, I'm feeling sick, I can't sleep, I can't do this, I can't do that. So he kind of like threw a monkey wrench in the program of me raising money for the revival. So we came up short on the money. Well, how much money do you think you lost because of Mr. Cologne's music? Well, I have evidence right here because last year we made $4,000. All right. And uh, this year we only made 1500 Okay. So you understand? We need that 2500 that I'm suing for. We really need this money because we got a lot of homeless people. We got pregnant women and their kids. We need to feed them. We need to provide some shelter for all type of people. When peop are you, do you own that home or do you rent it? I am currently renting the home. All right. So it's just been 60 days. Yes. People have a right to use and quiet enjoyment of their home, meaning when they rent a place, when they, they own it. You have a right to be able to enjoy yourself inside your home, doing the things you love to do. But you have to be mindful of neighbors. There is courtesy, right? Um, you have to be mindful of how your actions could affect another. Now, both of you, you are a church, yes, but you also live right next to a residential home. Judge Lake's verdict when we the people returns. Do you believe that conducting a revival at night after six, seven o'clock when others could be resting is the smartest thing to do when potentially you could have done the revival maybe earlier in the day? I mean, no other uh, tenant has complained. He's the first tenant that lived in that house that's complained. But there's always somebody. I don't know about always you, somebody. That's but right. I've lived on enough streets to know. Miss Co Mr. Colon might be a terrible neighbor. He might even be a jerk. But he's not liable for the $2,500 you did not make. Because there is no way for you to prove that the church would have made that money. You can't prove that definitively. Mr. Nicholas, what I advise is when you're doing your revivals, next time, make them earlier in the day. Mr. Colon, when they let you know what time it's going to be, let it be sometime when he at work. Do it during the week. Do it sometime where he's not around until his lease is up, and then you need to get yourself another place to live. Amen. Hallelujah. This is a waste of everybody's time. You could be in there trying to save some more souls. Save Mr. Soul. Nicholas, That's judgment what I do. for the defendant. Court is adjourned. All rise. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's case is dismissed. You know what, man? I don't even believe this, man. You know what? I'm going to roll with the judge. I respect her. But you, I don't respect you. And I ain't going to love my neighbor. I ain't going to do that. Not me. My Not this lifetime. Lord, forgive me. You could probably enjoy it. But, uh, yeah, you need to move. You need to sink the spot in a real way.